Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And I heard you got Grand Theft Auto V. You heard right. Uh, sorry, I just came running up the, up the stairs. I'm a little out of breath at the moment. Um, oh, God, those stairs got me. Oh, oh, stairs? My Should worst enemy. me. Yeah. Oh, oh. Sprite, actually. But no. I guess Sprite. <laughs> You're taking it easy. I was, I was taking it easy today. Yeah. Laying off the hard shit? No. Uh, that's actually, I was probably just running from playing Grand Theft Auto, because that's all I've really been doing. I've kind of, you know... I just, that, that, that's almost kind of like, I don't play video games as much as I used to, not because I don't like them, just because I don't have the time for them. I'm like, you know what? It's been awesome. I bought a new video game. I usually buy them a year late or two years late. I'll just buy this one. I really want it. And, uh, yeah, this whole week's been kind of a blur. I, I can't tell you what happened in my life. I can tell you what happened in that game. See, this is why I've always called video games, it's like a heroin addiction. Because you st- when you play a real good game, nothing else really fucking matters anymore. It doesn't. Because, because you know, at some point I had to stop and, like... Okay, I gotta go work on. I actually, I actually used some uh, self control, put the game down, worked on Drunk Batman for a little while, begrudgingly, like fucking dreams and ambitions getting in the fucking way of Grand Theft Auto, you know. And there, at some point, um, there's one day because I, I have a night job, so there's one day where I woke up and I started playing the game. Then it was time to go to work. And then and you're like, halfway oh, fucking work. Exactly. I, I got a real job to do here, man. Saving sure, the world! I gotta make sure this coke deal goes down, man. That's really important right now. <laughs> anyway, and as, I'm dri- and as I'm driving, I realize I changed my work clothes, but I did not shower or eat at all today. I just kind of realized... You, you just look in the mirror, <laughs> like, look at your hair, it's all messed like, up, oh, just fuck. slap yourself. Just keep slapping myself, it's like, oh, that's good, alright, yeah. Yeah, that's right, there, there we go, that's the look of a champ. Yeah. The stubble will go away if I slap it long enough, you know. But that happens, though. If you get a good game, you just, if nothing else matters. And that's how the game is. And the, it, it, I tell you this, I mean, I'm not, when, when I was younger, I did not play, I mean, I played Grand Theft Auto games, I never really owned one, I'd play them at a friend's house or whatever, and whenever I played it, I would almost get kind of like, I, I never was, this will sound dumb, but I was never mature enough just to go do the missions, I would just go like, I can go steal shit and go kill people, now it's just kind of like, no, 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 it's, it's business time, if that happens in the mission, okay, but it's more like, I gotta focus, I gotta just get the missions done, I don't really go joy thrilling in that game or anything. Well, I remember when Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, it was just like... The game was so mind blowing that like the missions came like way down the road. It's like the first couple weeks you had the game it was just like, oh my god, dude! It was like the first night I was playing it, I was hiding in the bushes and beating people with a baseball bat. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> I know it is amazing, really. And then and... you know, and this was once, and there's all the kind of stuff. And I remember as a kid, just like we explored Grand Theft Auto Three to the extreme. I mean, like, every nook and cranny. You took the dodo, like, plane that can't fly, and you were like, man, I got to fly for 45 seconds. I'm so fucking happy. And then as it kept going, it was great. But, you know, as I got older nowadays, it's like, when I go to play those kind of games, it's like, it's almost like, it's like going to work. It's like, yeah, so I don't have time to be dicking around here. What's the next mission? Hmm, okay, let's go rob this bank. Okay, that sounds about right. Look. I think I can handle that today. <laughs> and that being said, I'll probably say, uh, now what I remember the other Grand Theft Auto games, I mean, there still is, like, you know, assassinations and all that, but a big thing of this game is heist. Because you're working as three different guys and you're planning heist. That's, like, the main thing. Because each, each kind of middle of the ground, like, because every time you pull off a big heist, that's kind of like a next step in the game, sort of. Oh, so the story's more like, I guess, continue. Three. It's like three, it's like what happens is you're playing as three guys and you open up and oh, that's some, way different. That's already different to start off. You're playing as three different people. Your thing is... Well, you you, you kind of gain them. Like, it opens up. You're you're basically in Fargo. That's basically where you're at. <laughs> and you're in the middle I of a heist. I it was San Andreas. Uh, it, as it goes on, yeah. Oh, no, no, okay. no. It opens up. This is the very first thing. It opens up, and you're doing like, you're doing like a bank heist of some sort. And you switch between uh, this Michael and a guy named Trevor. Mm-hmm. And then the heist goes very wrong, and you find out that Michael faked his own funeral... His own death, and Trevor got away. You don't know what happened to Trevor, if he died or what. Yeah. So then, um, it then jumps to like nine years later, Michael's and a therapist talking about how he, he's rich and all that, but he, he don't really know how he got there, because, you know, you saw, you, 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 they don't go into details of how he faked his funeral, but they show him kind of like peeking around a corner at the funeral and walking the other way. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens is, you see that, then you cut to like this guy, this guy Franklin, who's from the ghetto generally, mm-hmm. and he's, he's some guy, he's... He's lived on the streets, he's done that whole song and dance, but he's like tired of, he's tired of that whole kind of like gangbanger lifestyle. He's like, look, if I'm going to do crime, I want legitimate shit. I don't want to do the stupid throwing gang signs, drive-by shit. I want to make real money. This is stupid, pointless bullshit. Mm-hmm. 
And so you do some jobs as him for a little while, and you're a repo man. You work for a crooked car salesman. Oh, that's cool. So, um, and there's one mission you go to where you break into this dude's house and you steal his car. And then as you're driving, Michael's in the back seat, points a gun at your head. He says, like, why the fuck are you taking my son's car? He's like, oh, well, um, he says, like, I'm, look, man, I'm just a repo man. This is, all right, drive to the place. And you drive to the place. He says, now drive into the, now drive into the building. So are you, are you serious? Yeah, drive into the building. So you drive around the building, you get out, you play as Michael, you kick the shit out of the car, out of the dealership's owner. That's badass. And then you kind of switch between Michael and Franklin. And then like, you know, Franklin's like, you, you got me, you, I lost my job because of you. And like, Michael's is kind of getting back into the game mm -hmm. just by hanging out with Franklin. And then the, after you pull off the big heist and you switch to this guy named Trevor, who is quite possibly one of the greatest characters in a video game, in okay. my opinion. Because <laughs> I'll say this, every character you've ever played as, played mm -hmm. as in, in a Grand Theft Auto game, I know I'm talking a lot, so I'll wrap this up, but um, every character you play as in a Grand Theft Auto game, it's like, maybe they're not good people, but they have morals and codes, you know? You don't see them running up and just beating the shit out of somebody on the street. That's you. That's not really yeah. that what that it's not The character themselves has always been, they're generally not bad people. Trevor is all of that. All he, bad. You do not, you do not, because if, if I run over a, a, per, a bystander as Michael or Franklin, I feel bad, because I know they wouldn't do that in real life. Like, mm. shit, whatever. But, um, is Trevor, though? That is who you are. That, that, that's who that is, and you would not feel bad. There's, like, when they first introduce him, he's, like, in some beat-up trailer, fucking some chick, watching the news, <laughs> and the guy comes out, he's like, my wife's in there! He's like, he comes out, he's like, it's like some cokehead, like, uh, biker. Mm -hmm. He's like, your wife's in there, but uh, that's my place, and you ain't going in there, man. So, and he's a, he's a little pissed off because he just found out Michael was alive. He thought he was dead this whole time, mm -hmm. and he's all pissed off. He's like, "Look, you're coming to me with this wife bullshit. You're hitting me at a bad time. Just fuck off, man." He's just like, he gets he gets on a little bit more, and he says, "Like, you want to fuck her? Fuck me right now. Let's fuck. <laughs> Pull your pants down, man. Let's fuck right here in front of these boys, you know." <laughs> and then he's all like, "Listen, man, I still love my wife. I just he just walks away. And says, "Hey, man, give me a hug. Give me a hug." He walks up to him, hugs him, holds him. Then punches him in the face, then starts stomping his head down. You fucking faggot! Just starts stomping <laughs> on the guy's head, and then he then he chases the bikers to their like trailer park where they all live, mm -hmm. and then he like kills them all, just because you know, <laughs> just because he's because he's psych he's psychotic. He goes there and says, "Hey, what happened to Billy?" He says, "Oh, here, I don't." Actually, you know what? Billy's right here. He lifts up his shoe. There's blood on the bottom of his shoe. That's what's fucking left of Billy. Fucking talk to Billy right now. You know? <laughs> so he's just like full on fucking psychotic. He's, he's out there. And there's like this, there's this, he has like a, his little sidekick, which is this guy named Wade, who's generally, he's generally a juggalo, you know, mm -hmm. ICP. And um, he's also like just brain dead. And you go to, you go, like he says like, I have a cousin that lives in like, uh, in, uh, it's, is it? They mentioned San Andreas County a few times, but it's like what what is it called? Uh, San La Rosa or something? San. La, it's well, like, uh, it's like if it's kind of like LS LS like Los San. Oh, so you're still in the Los Angeles section of the game? Yeah, yeah. You go to other places though, and then so when you get there though, well, that, that's like on some like. Little, but does that stick to kind of like the way that San Andreas was? In the I old, didn't get far enough where in San there's, Andreas. And there's pretty much the Los Angeles section, the San Francisco section, and the Nevada or in the Las Vegas. Yeah, the, the, area, the area you play is a Trevor. You jump to a different side of the map, and it, you're in, like, this kind of a little California Valley town, which is, like, on the outskirts of L.A. Mm -hmm. Generally, that's the idea of it. A bunch of meth heads, a lot of bikers, all that kind of shit. Uh -huh. And then, once you, this is, like, one of the funniest parts. You end up going to live with... That, that becomes your safe house, this dude's cousin. Mm -hmm. And he's some guy like, I love my wife, and I don't want her to get married to me, and, you know, this and that, and... <laughs> You're just generally destroying this guy's life just by living there. Mm -hmm. And at some point, part after you finish a mission, you walk in there. She's like, "Look, Trevor, I, I respect you, but you're really damaging my home. Uh, what you did to my my girlfriend's teddy bear from her childhood, like Raspberry Jam." Like Trevor goes up to this Raspberry Jam was a good little soldier, and she was there at a time when a very confused, mis misunderstood man needed her the most. So she will be greatly missed. See the teddy bear? It's wearing a pair of woman's panties and it has a hole in its fucking eye socket. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the little things like that. And I could just go on all day with this well, game. Grand Theft Auto always just had good comedy in it, though. It always it's had like, some of the best yeah. dark comedy. Because that was really what Grand Once Grand Theft Auto, I mean, like the, the first couple, you know, they had, you know, their stories and all that good stuff to them. And they were really amazing games as well. But. Once three and so on kind of went on, it's like mm -hmm. the, the, the really well-developed characters, the good actors, the funny situations. 
and just all the random stuff. After you do this, because I mean, I could talk about Franklin and Michael, and they're good characters, and they're they're all they're awesome. But once you talk about Trevor, it's just like, what's the point? Because yeah, he's this, just this is the guy who always like stories people remember. <laughs> because there's a part actually, after you do a job for like you got on bad terms with one guy, and you you paid him back, and then he says like, hey, you're doing good. Why don't you come back and work for me for a little while? And he didn't, Michael, like, you, you playing as Michael. And then he says, like, okay, we're going to meet the rendezvous point. Trevor's on the phone. No, 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 we're not going to meet there. I'll, I'll tell you later. He says, what did you do? Uh, just meet me here. And I'll explain it then. He's like, fuck. <laughs> so you get it there as Michael. Trevor pulls up in this car. And he says, like, all right, man, what happened? He says, like, we had a disagreement. He says, fuck's sake. Did you kill him? He says, no, I didn't kill him. What kind of person do you think I am? Then goes the truck. I stole his wife. <laughs> so she's all fucking cagged and tied up. That's pretty funny. So, oh, God, the game is just, yeah. Now, to, when I borrow it, we, I'll have to let you borrow it when I'm done with the thing. It's going to be a little while, though. Now, let me just ask some Grand Theft Auto questions, because uh, I've played them all the way up till number four, and I haven't played this one yet. Now, did they kind of, because the, the downfall to number four was, and to me, it's like, four, if I never would have ever played a Grand Theft Auto game, I think that game would have been really cool. But, and it's not like, it's, it's, it's a cool game in itself, but it took so much stuff away that was in San Andreas, it, it almost felt like we were starting back at three again, and it's just kind of like, okay, like, um, where's the planes? Where's the helicopters? Where's all the extra vehicles? You get all that. Where's all the custom? I mean, why is it custom? You get a submarine. I like. Oh, that's badass. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those ones. Like the coolest costume. Fucking almost. It seemed like a number four was like. Oh, I could put a suit on. Mm -hmm. This is cool. But like in San Andreas, you can make your character any way you wanted. That was kind of cool. You know, and just all this little side, all these mini things that you would never have thought of. And even if they are kind of dumb, it's like, well, that was cool. But in four, it's just like they focus straight on the story, which that's fine. Don't get me wrong, but I just always kind of wish there was a little bit more to it. Now, the, I guess the number one bummer to me in number four was, where the fuck is the planes? Because that, that was really this, one of the coolest things. A, a plane could be a bitch to land. It, it wasn't so much it was the hardest thing to land. It was more Can like... you parachute out of them? Uh, I think if you... Because I, I don't know what... The simple fun of like, I'm going to go steal this plane, fly up really high, and parachute out. Maybe you have to unlock a parachute or buy a parachute, but I, there's been a mission. There's actually a mission. Of course, it's a Trevor mission because he has the craziest missions. There is a, you, all you have is a crop duster mm -hmm. and you're flying after some like, kind of like, uh, I believe there, there's some type of like Blackwater type organization. Some kind of big military mercenary organization. Mm -hmm. And they're, uh, you're flying up behind this big military jet on the bed with a crop duster <laughs> and they're firing like rockets at you. You have to fly into the back of the plane, get in That's there, badass. then you run and then you, you, you take out everybody in the plane and you start to pilot it for a little while. But then some Harrier jets come after you. They shoot the thing down. Next shot, it's like Trevor running down. You play as this part. Running out of the plane, jumping and parachuting down. Oh, that's badass. So, um, I haven't really got the thing to unlock a parachute. Maybe you have to unlock it later. Maybe you only get in certain missions. But, yeah. Huh. Well, that's good. As long as... Because that was like the one... The thing about Grand Theft Auto is just like... It just felt like they took more than they... It's like they, they put some new features in. Younger, like the gameplay-wise, it was made more smoother. The shooting mm. was better. All that kind of stuff was... And I did like the part that you could get drunk and go driving. I don't know. Simple things like that in Grand Theft Auto really <laughs> just make your day. You can do that still. You could do... Well, like, yeah. I believe you can't... You can purchase... I don't know if to the extent of, like, Vice City, but you can uh, purchase property. You can. And that was the other downfall. Was, and that was the same thing with Red Dead uh, Redemption. I was mm -hmm. so bummed. It's like, why can't you purchase, like, these buildings? Like, or you purchase buildings, but they don't do any fucking good for you. Like, why can't I make profit off this? Why, you know... I'm assuming you can... I haven't really tried it. I've just been playing the story. I haven't really been doing Most much of those things stuff. I remember in Grand Theft Auto, they don't come up till about, like, you know, close to maybe halfway through the game or so, give or take. I want to say the thing says I'm at 36% right now, maybe 40. And mostly that means, like, you're farther along than that because, yeah, you include all the side and small mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, there's just so much in the game. And I'll say this because every so often, like, they'll talk about, oh, they're going to make a Grand Theft Auto movie. Um, it's kind of like, what's the point? Because they're just kind of like, Vice City, it's just a bunch of 80s crime films thrown in one. And Grand Theft 3 just took from, you know, everything Godfather, from Godfather, Scarface. Goodfellas. Yeah. Vice just... City's like more like, you know, Miami Vice, uh, uh, Scarface, and, uh, a little bit of Carlito's Way, if you look at the lawyer. Mm-hmm. No, it's like, that's mostly, it's like, that's what Grand Theft Auto is. It just took from them. That's kind of like when they said about the Red Dead Redemption thing, too. It's mm -hmm. like, what do you think that mo that game got all its ideas from? It's movies. A, but that being said, though, um, I'm not saying they should. And if they do, I hope it does good. I hope they make a great movie, because I want that one really good video game movie to happen already. Mm -hmm. But 
this would be the movie to make. This is this is kind of like one of the few stories where it's like, okay, I see a little bit of Sopranos, I see a little bit of Breaking Bad, but it generally feels like its own story because you're playing as three very different guys who pull off heists. That's the big thing. I mean, every so often you go off and you'll like do a job for somebody, a very Grand Theft Auto ish job, but mm-hmm. like San Andreas, that was more like you know '90s like street warfare and all that kind of shit, right? Mm-hmm. So. And what year does this one take place in? I think it's modern age. Modern it has age. to be modern age because they have they have smartphones, and if you watch television, it's like parodies of TV shows they're on right now. Okay, so yeah, you 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 had a, you had like a smartphone in like the Grand Theft Auto three. Mm-hmm. You did in three or four? I mean, okay, I was gonna say no. You just had a regular phone. In I was gonna three. say they. Yeah. Said everyone's like dur, 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 they're just ahead of the times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But so so far, would you think it's one of the best Grand Thefts you played? I'd say it's the best one I played, but keep that in mind. All the Grand Theft Autos I played before, I just kind of ran in and just did dumb shit. Just did dumb Or did the codes to get the tank or the Harrier jet. I never really played the game through. And this is the first one I played through. But that being said, it's the best one I've played so far. So. Huh. That's pretty cool. Not trying to set the bar too high for you. But yeah, it's uh, the yeah, humor Grand Theft Auto generally was setting the bar pretty darn high. I just felt that the only one that was sort of the letdown Four. was the last one. Yeah, and it... And probably, if you never played a Grand Theft Auto previous to that, you probably would have thought that was an amazing game, and you would never mm-hmm. question any of it. But when you already have this knowledge of what existed prior, it's mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, why'd you take away? It's kind of funny, because if you switch between characters, it usually lands on, I'm keeping going back to Trevor, because keep in mind, this is somebody I would never want to meet in person, because God knows what he wants to do, but playing as him, mm-hmm. so fucking fun. Because when you play as Michael or Franklin, like, all right, so you jump as you jump into Franklin, you jump to where he's at, it usually opens up with a small little cutscene. Maybe he's hanging out of his house. Maybe he's washing his car. Maybe he's at the beach doing pull-ups or walking out of a bar. Switch over to Michael. I that rhymed. What? I didn't try <laughs> it to. It like a poem. <laughs> I didn't try to. I honestly wasn't trying to. <laughs> but if you then, like, um, say you play as Michael. It opens up. He's just hanging out, like, sitting on a side, sitting on a, on a, like, a bus stop, smoking a cigarette, or just walking through town or driving his car. You play. You switch over to Trevor. He's waking up, crawling out of a dumpster. <laughs> he's like his hand is against a wall just vomiting in the street That's awesome. and then everything's blurry like he just got done like taking some drugs for a second that's pretty badass <laughs> there's one that maybe crack up where he's just driving or jumps up he's in a little scooter just a little stupid little vespa scooter driving next to one guy so he's like he's just like scooter brothers Let's go on a scooter adventure! Scooter Brothers! Just like if you follow the guy, he just keeps on screaming. Yelling at this guy. <laughs> the guy just keeps on trying to avoid you. <laughs> That's so. badass. That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, so. Well, this game's kind of older by now, but not by much. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just finally got around to playing the new Tomb Raider. It's still pretty new. We, we do live in this age now where things are like old, you know, two weeks later. But Back like, probably like 2000 and back, it was almost seems kind of like... Oh, it's it's a new game. It came out this year, or it came out a year and a half ago. But now it's like well, came out when three I was months. a kid. A new game lasted for like five years. You know, Goldeneye was still a new game at like nineteen ninety nine or two thousand. You know. Yeah, now it's kind of like as soon as like uh, new, like old is like four months ago. It seems. If that even yeah, it's like if it's like almost if you're not there for that month, it's already it's like well, it's a month past. Yeah, we're, the we're f- on to something else now. Somebody talked to me. They listened to the podcast. Like, yeah, the, why the fuck are you talking about, Grand, uh, about Bioshock Infinite? Uh, yeah, that game's been out for a while. It's like, fuck I you. I just played it. Yeah. I, I should have said that. I'm like, I just played it. That's all. Oh, yeah, it's just like, you know... I don't. Know. I don't have the. I don't have the money to go out and buy every new game that comes out. Yeah, because I just remember being, as being younger. It's just like, yeah, you you could pick up a game that was four years old, but it, it never came across as like, oh, you're picking up an old game. It was like, yeah, I just there's, up... there almost is a shunt. But now it's almost like, yeah, you almost feel like you go into GameStop nowadays and buy a game that's like in the used rack. People are like, mm-hmm. oh, look at that guy, <laughs> buying from the ten dollar rack. What a loser. Go back to GameStop for a second. I got a little bit of shit from GameStop when I bought this game. Oh, when you bought Grand Theft Auto. Because when I went in there, it was just like I walked up there and fuck me for thinking just go in there and do this. But I just, I walked in and I'm like, hi, I'd like to buy a copy of Grand Theft Auto. They're all back on the back shelf. Like, okay, uh, what's your pre-order number? Like, I didn't pre-order it. He's like, gives me this look like, you didn't pre-order it. I'm like, no. He says, why didn't you pre-order it? Because it's a pretty big game and I assumed you guys ordered extras, you know? <laughs> and then he's all like, oh, well. And then he's like, oh, okay, well, um, uh... He looks around. He looks he's, really, he's like, he's like I, I, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do at this yeah. point. Yeah, and he's just like, okay, well, um, he's just like... He puts he, his hand up, I need an adult! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just one of those things, just, it pisses me off, because, like, 
pre-order something. It's a fucking, it's a huge title. You know, if I walked in there saying I'd like to get this game, you know other people have had a well, walk. I feel if 50 people pre-order and probably more than that pre-order it, you order 100 because you know that there's always going to be more people that are just going to come in and buy it than pre-order it. And, le- and unless this is a franchise you already know, which I already sh- I'm assumed it was going to be a good game, but why would you go spend 60 bucks before playing a game or at least hearing something about it, in my opinion? <laughs> unless you, you really trust the game. Oh, yeah, unless you really trust the game. Yeah, I know it's almost well. Yeah, it's like unless you either unless you got money, or unless you have faith. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I was pretty sure it was to be a good game. It's Grand Theft Auto, so they, they've never led me astray. So I'm a little nervous now because like I went because I went in and the guy says, "Well, a couple of these titles have been sitting here for a week now, so and I don't think they're gonna come in by the end of Sunday, which is well, end of Monday, which is when we get our new next shipment. So like, I'll just sell you one of these copies right here. So. As soon as I leave, everybody comes in like, "Who took my copy?" The guy gives them like my gamer information, like, like my game saver information or whatever. He tracks me down. It's yeah. fucking Trevor from Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be San Andreas, so it could be. Yeah. But uh, well, here this is what I did instead. On good old GameFly, they were like, "Spencer, we want you back." That was nine ninety five sound for two months. I'm like, sounds fucking right. That's why I feel. I, don't get me wrong. I think GameFly is a fantastic service. I just don't think that sixteen, you know, ninety nine or whatever it is, for one game out. I, uh, I don't know. That that's a little expensive for just one month. They sound like the post apocalyptic barter of like internet companies because you just you can barter with them. It's like kind of like, you know you could just like, all right, I'll give you uh, I'll give you this uh, sack of like KFC wipes in twenty bucks. You know. But yeah, it's like once what? So they gave me the discount again. It's just. Maybe, maybe, here's the thing, I feel that maybe 17 bucks a month or so, give or take, whatever it is, would be fine if you had the internet, because then you can, like, download all those older PC games, but to me, it's like, I'm paying 17 bucks, and you don't get the newest games, you're getting games that are all, like, a year. four, no, but yeah, you can, you can get that too, but I mean, generally, it's pretty hard to get, like, a game that came out in the last couple mm-hmm. months. You're sticking more to games that came out four to, like, eight months ago. Mm-hmm. So most of those games, by this point, too, are, like, 20 bucks used, so to me, it's like, I could pay pay seventeen bucks a month, or I could just buy the game almost. Yeah, that's exactly. the only thing to me because, like, in a sense, in game flights, unless you got nothing to do in your day and you can like ship a game back every like weekend, like if you're a kid, it makes sense. Yeah, but when you're kind of older, it's like you kind of have that game for the entire month. Exactly. And so it's like that to me. It's like unless you give me a deal, it's like that's not gonna work out. So I got the deal. So I was like, you know what? Fuck, I'm getting that new Tomb Raider game. You know that that looked really badass, but I just didn't have sixty dollars. And that game is fucking amazing. It, it is? is literally one of the coolest games I've played in a long time. I heard nothing but good things about it. And Tomb Raider, they kept on like re-releasing it, but just kind of like doing half-assed versions. And they said this is the first one to actually do a good job with it. Well, they did good jobs with the other ones too. But it's the many things like I don't know what it is about video games. Video games is like the one type of thing. If it doesn't get like a nine or a ten out of ten, or you know a four or a five out of five, people just kind of go fuck that game. And it's like, well. And eight's not so bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. But people, I don't know what it is, but like if a game doesn't get at least a nine and up, if people almost kind of say like, well, fuck that game, it was a horrible game then. It's like, mm-hmm. I remember one magazine, it might have even been Game Informer, wrote something, it was like, whoa, 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 guys. Just because something doesn't get a nine or a ten, that doesn't mean we didn't like it. They said like, a six is still not that bad. It just means it has a few things wrong with it. That's it. <laughs> They're like, Jesus Christ, people. So it really like all those other Tomb Raider games, like there is, you know... I think the last ones, they all got pretty good ratings. I mean, like, the one that came up before this one had, like, a 9.25. The one before this one, wasn't was it? The just, Underworld. It was, like, the... Was it the one that... There's one that came out that was just generally just a brand new remake of just Tomb Raider 1. That was, was like... I think it was called Tomb Raider... An- I always get confused. It was, like, Tomb Raider Legend, Tomb Raider Anniversary. And I think it was Tomb Raider Anniversary. And for the longest time, I always wanted to pick that game up, but you could, like... It was really hard to find it. It was just, like... And then I saw it online. It's like, well, I don't want to pay $25 used for it. The sad thing is the game didn't do, make a lot of money, so they're not sure if it's going to get a sequel. Oh, for this one right here? Yeah. Yeah. So, and well, Square, like, kind of bought the rights, which that made me think that it was a Japanese game. I was like, oh, is it Japanese made now? And I was like, oh, no, it's still made by, you know, or Americans, Crystal Dynamics, or wherever that is. I think it's in, actually, San Rafael or something like that. It's the same company that owns uh, the, uh, the the lizard that jumps inside TV, uh, Gex. X. Oh, Same yeah. company, isn't it? 
That that was Edios. I don't know if the um, well, I guess if, if they bought two, maybe the, like I think Square just bought Edios completely, so they maybe they, they own that all that stuff. But what was uh, was Tomb Raider owned by that same company? It was Edios. Yeah, okay. that was the one that made the original Tomb Raiders. And really, I like I played Tomb Raider one, and I played Tomb Raider two, and then I played a bit of three and four. And after that, I never played Tomb Raider ever since then. It was just mm-hmm. one of the ones I, I was always still interested, but just the many things of life. There's so many games, and only enough time to play some of them. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and I, for the longest, for about the last five years, I keep saying, I'm like, I'm going to go buy one of those new Tomb Raiders. Because they, they never got horrible reviews. They just didn't get nearly as good of reviews as maybe some other games. Mm-hmm. And, and I, in my, my life, I, I've picked up games that, the, you know, magazines will give six out of ten. And to me, it's like, this is a fucking, like, nine out of ten game. Like, I, I'm not complaining. It's good enough for me. And they darken this one up. This one has an M rating, right? They gave this one an M rating, so it just kind of has, like... It's more like it's just like, let's just put the violence in there, you know? Which really, like, when the, like, the 1995 version of you as a kid's like, why is it rated M? <laughs> is there the secret where you get to see her tits? If you, back, if you back up into the wall and they get the angle just perfect. There is that thing where it's like, apparently, if you... Because there, there were always... Tomb Raider was one of those games that had all those Your rumors. Shroud, like, it, that game had more conspiracies and more kind of like urban legends than any other game I can think of. There's one like that. There's like Dave Mira 2, Dave Mira BMX 2. There's like, if you... There's the level where you're like, one of the tracks is like a big, I guess, campground for like kids with, on half pipes and all that. Uh-huh. You go to one of the cabins at an exact certain time. There's like a chick in there naked or something like that. There's always like those kind of rumors, but then the internet came out, which was, oh, this is all bullshit. Yeah, well, it's like America's, so yeah, like Tomb Raider was the one that always had it. I just remember there was one, I think it was for Tomb Raider 1. You're supposed to like back up into the wall at a certain angle, and then like the camera would rotate and you would see through. And it probably never happened. Huh? Never happened. Yeah, I never saw that, ladies. And then like, there, and number two, I remember when you're at her house and you're kind of doing like the obstacle course thing, there's some ways you're supposed to jump into the pool somehow, some way. And, and people describe it like, when you jump in the pool, she dives in. It's like a CG, like really well rendered for the time <laughs> graphics. <laughs> you know, she like swims. Like tame for that. Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, sure. And then like, uh, but I'll tell you this: this game doesn't get its mature rating for that. I know it's like a lot of violence, right? Right. Just as far as nowadays games go, just kind of like regular violence. There's, there's nothing like, you know, it's not like she's going up and curb stomping, you know, people <laughs> like left and right. She does have, like, execution moves where she shoots people in the head at point-blank range, but, mm-hmm. um, no, it's, it's more just, like, the, your regular kind of stuff, even though, like, it's got this kind of story where she's young, and she's on, like, this kind of, like, archaeology crew, and they're, like, a reality TV crew's there, you know, I guess that's the way, I guess that's how you fund it nowadays, how else do you fund <laughs> archaeology? Yeah, I guess you do guys. You're like, you gotta make a TV show off of it, nobody's gonna see it, you know, we're just paying for you to go out there by yourself with no TV. Do they play it off, kind of like, this is so stupid, too bad we just can't go out here and do this ourselves? No, they, 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 it's like, the reality crew's there, but it's not like, it's like, hey, they don't try to make it very reality, it's just more like they say, this is a reality crew, um, uh, that's about it. Okay. And then your ship kind of, you know, you're going to this island of the summer in Japan area, or off of Japan, and your ship crashes or whatever, and you get kind of like, she, or she gets marooned on the island, you don't know what happened to anybody else, kind of like one of those ones. She washes up on the shore, and it looks kind of like Jurassic Park. That's really what it looks like. Okay. And now the game actually reminds Every me... Every tropical sounds island. Weird. It reminds me of Jurassic Park without the dinosaurs, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. That's how it feels. And, you know, at first she kind of lands, and she's just... And it's already kind of cool, because like at first, kind of like a, you know, it's, you're in a movie, and you're going through this cave, and you got like a torch, and you're going through and exploring, and then she falls through this hole and gets like impaled, sort of right on the side, she's got to pull it off, and it's like, now you got to like, you know, survive out in the woods, and she's like, I'm starting to get hungry, so you got to start hunting with a bow and arrow and stuff that you find off like this dead corpse, and then next thing you know, you're going through this area, and you're just like, what the fuck, there's all these dead bodies in here. And then this, like, rapist jumps out and, like, tries to, like, grab you and you have to fight him off. Really? Just a rapist? Jumps, he's just chase, is he chasing with his pants down or some shit? <laughs> no, just some guy that's in, like, At a cave. At least you know where to kick him. Like, it's a guy living in a cave. What else is he? Yeah, okay. Good point. <laughs> you know, and what you kind of learn later on is that on this island, ships have been getting stuck here forever and there's, like, not really a way to get back off. It's got, a, like, that slight bit of fantasy thing like an Indiana Jones sort of has. Uh-huh. You know, so now you got, and it's kind of cool because there's like these like World War II bunkers mixed with like ancient Japanese type stuff there. So there's temples and all that still? Yeah, so you still get the temples and stuff. And I mean, the game is like, I mean, I, Tomb Raider in general is always an action adventure game anyways. Do you get mythological creatures or anything like that? There's like, okay, towards the very end you get these like samurai guys that kind of like come back from the dead sort of thing, I guess you could say. Okay. 
but so, no, it's like it's like once once it's, it's just like an Indiana Jones thing. There's just a little bit of fantasy in there. Is, is this like uh, is it just so it's just an island of people that were marooned on this island and they just kind of built their own society of just rape? Well, they became like cultists, like based on like the legend. There's this like ancient Japanese like oh, okay. warlord woman who like you know ran you know everything the light touches kind of like yeah Lion King thing mm-hmm. with violence. Okay. <laughs> I think Lion King's probably filled a bunch of violence too. If you were to cut away, yeah. <laughs> All these animals show up because if they don't show up, they're the ones who get killed. They're like, son, anybody that doesn't show up on the list here, we gotta eat them. Yeah. <laughs> if like one person doesn't show up for like the whole ceremony, would like they lift Simba up and like you know the whole time like Mufasa is just looking. All right, that guy showed up. That guy showed. Up. Phil, that fucker is so lunch. You know, <laughs> he's part- not here. He's getting eaten tonight. The part when Mufasa shows up and stops Scar from eating that mouse is like, yeah, I just got done eating Phil. I tracked that fucker for the last, like, few hours because he showed up my son's birthing ceremony. You fucking douchebag. I know, I fucking hate Phil, too. Otherwise, I would have been here day one. You're lucky you're my fucking brother, Scar. <laughs> but the, the, the play mechanics of this game are just amazing, though. They really, they, like, they take, you know, you know, strange enough, it takes, you know, I mean, and really, when you think about it, like, well, Tomb Raider's really the first one to start all this, like, play mechanics anyways, the, kind of the adventure it action is. game in 3D. But since then, you know, we've had our other incarnations, whether they be older franchises or new ones. So, I mean, it takes, like, Uncharted. the best of, like, something like, well, I've never played Uncharted. So I mean, something around those lines. Because like, Uncharted Raider inspired Uncharted, a lot of that. Yeah, because Uncharted was kind of like almost the new Tomb Raider, in a sense, for a mm-hmm. while. But it takes things, you know, from, like, you know, Prince of Persia. I look back at Prince of Persia, I know most people kind of probably have forgotten about that game by this point, but that was, like, when that first, like, remake kind of went away, you want to say, The Sands of Time came out, that game was fucking amazing. Sands of Time was great. Yeah, it's still a great game to this day. I love that one. The second one was a little, like, shaky because they started throwing well, in, like, just, like, copious amounts of violence, and, and then they're... Dun, dun. They're playing... Yeah! God Smack. They're playing... They played a lot of God Smack. That's the thing they're doing with that mm-hmm. game. They played the song from the Scorpion King. Yeah. But, you know, more like, it's just like, you know, just that kind of like... And Prince of Persia really created, like, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed reminds me of the spawn between two things. Grand Theft Auto and Prince of Persia, really. That's a good point. Because it's really like, hey, kids, you like Grand Theft Auto? And you like Prince of Persia? Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? We made a game that has both of it in there. It's called Assassin's fucking Creed. Holy fucking shit. (laughs) Because that's our target audience is fucking ten-year-old children. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, no, it's just like, I mean, it... Because uh, I was like, I was always like, Assassin's Creed was a much smoother like Prince of Persia slash Grand Theft Auto. This game makes it even smoother, and it almost it actually reminds me a lot of Arkham like Asylum and City. Mm-hmm. Does it have the stealth aspect to it? Uh, it has a little bit of that. Like you, you, you can still you can sort of stealth kill people and whatnot. But no, just because like the way it sort of moves, it, like it kind of feels the same way that that is. And she's also got you know she's going back and forth between ropes, and it reminds me kind of like. And Batman, uh, the thing that you shoot back... It's, it's in the first movie, too. Oh, yeah. You know, where you shoot back forth and you go across it. The, oh, right. Or... I don't know what you... Th- a a, mo- a motorized... Hook, um, grappling hook type thing where it's like... It doesn't go up or down, but it just it goes, goes left... Left back. and right. Or... That's a fucking try. Yeah. Forward and back. Which I ain't trying to talk shit on Bruce Wayne, because we all know that's my idol, but... Uh, uh, fictitious idol. But it's one of those things, like... You think he would be smart enough to make the bat bat hook just strong enough to just drag him right across and make? I understand it's a game, so you got to give a reason for the mechanics of how how it works. But yeah, just maybe he's afraid it's like, well, I, I tried that where it shot across. <laughs> Next thing you know, it was fucking like a Looney Tunes cartoon. I'm like straight into that wall, <laughs> <laughs> just like bam to the point. Yeah, and just thing. slowly <laughs> slides down. <laughs> There's the Wile E. Coyote thing where he like peels off. You just see him fall down from distance. You see a little puff at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's just got all kinds of cool stuff like that. Just It kind of, like, sort of, sort of, like, you get these kind of makeshift gadgets in that one, though. But they kind of remind me a lot of, like, the Arkham Asylum gadgets. Okay. That's kind of, and just, I don't know, just, it's fucking awesome. And just, the locations look great. The graphics just blow my mind. I heard a lot of people praising it, because what they did in this game, this sounds like a smart move. They made, because, lo- like, they made Laura. she was still, like, hot and all that, but they didn't make her, like, overly sexualized. They made her a much more of a real character. Well, what they did in this one is, yeah, it, which, to me, that's kind of, like, my it's my slight complaint, because they kind of make, and that's, like, I, I know that's kind of the end thing nowadays, is, like, back in the 90s, it was more just, like, it didn't matter, guy or gal is just, like, it's a badass. Like, you, you didn't question it. That's just how the character came off. It's just supposed to be, like, it was just, like, an action star. Mm-hmm. You don't see John McClane, like, day one, like, oh, I don't know if I can kill this guy. <laughs> oh, he's shaky here. Oh. Is there a little bit of that in this? Well, yeah, she kind of does that, like, in a sense, like, she's like, oh, oh, just can't somebody. 
It was just like most moments, it's like, just get the fuck over it. You're Laura Croft, don't give me that bullshit. <laughs> it's like, to me, it's like, it does kind of add a little bit of that. And I, was, and I know that's kind of, the, it's the new thing nowadays is to have like that super character development. Now, is this a, a, a prequel or a reboot? I don't know. It could, it, it feels more like a prequel than a reboot, except for the fact it takes place like in modern times. It could be the James Bond thing. Where, like, yeah, oh, we don't really I give think a it's shit. more like that. You know, like, we, we, we don't really care what the fuck, you'll show up anyways. Just takes place in the 80s, you know, they're just listening like flocks of that'd be, seagulls that'd be better. Something. It'd be cool if it took place in the 80s. In my opinion, I think that's the better way to do it. Don't fucking give me this bullshit like that, but whatever. You know, and at some point, that's too, because like, also there's kind of like a, like an old Tomb Raider fan, like, when the fuck is she going to pull two guns out, though? When the fuck is she going to pull two guns out? And she, she? At the very, very age, she picks up two guns and fires them off. I was like, oh, okay, good, but... That, that, that should have came in a little bit earlier. I, I know it's not realistic, and we live in that age where people want to try to make things as realistic as possible. Where I guess in the 90s, that was the time of, like, things were two slightly guns. over the top. It was like, yeah, because well, why two guns? Because two guns is fucking badass. Because <laughs> you can't just go outside and shoot two guns. They'll probably bring that into the next one if the next one happens. And this game, you know, even though it, it didn't make, like, marvelous amounts of money, it probably paid for itself and then mm -hmm. some. You know, because a lot of times people always talk about, it's like, I guess because they were, they were assuming it was going to be a big hit. Yeah. I guess they're banking on the fact that it was going to be the next Assassin's Creed kind of like thing. Because Assassin's Creed is one of those things kind of like... I don't think anybody thought it was going to be as big as it was. Mm -hmm. And it just became humongous. But you know what's the sad, the sad thing? I really think the main reason why this game didn't do super well as much, and I don't think it had to do with the fact that like the last ones just didn't get as much like praise. I just think people don't care for games as much. The, 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 the main core audience of video game players don't care for a game that has a girl that stars in the main character. I can possibly see that because there's. It studies. sounds weird, but think about think think about the top five biggest games out there. There's yeah. no females in the it all in the main characters. There's that, and there's also because um, even though you play as uh, what's his name is um, Booker, Booker DeWitt in Bioshock, apparently the the marketing uh, the marketing campaign put up this thing out that said originally it was going to just have Elizabeth on the cover, mm -hmm. and then they had one with him and Elizabeth. But ironically, the one with just him with a gun slung over his shoulder... Was the one that people wanted. More than having a girl on the cover, or having him and the girl on the cover. Because really, it's like one of those ones... I, I think I think that's the key thing. If Laura Croft happened to be Indiana Jones, people would have fucking ate that up. Mm -hmm. But since she's Laura Croft, I think that's the re... I think some people just have this weird thing. It's like, they don't mind weird. if there's a chick character there. Like, you know... I remember when Gears of War 3 came out, there was, a, there was sort of this, like, inner man thing, kind of like, they're like, I remember when they said they were bringing chicks into the game, I was like, whoa, 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 this is, this is like, a, this is like our man cave, don't, don't be messing up the man cave now, I mean, chicks are fun and all, but uh, this is dude's night out, that's what Gears of War is, it is dude's night out to the extreme, no chicks, just dudes, I just, I just see, shooting guns, I just killing see, shit, I just see, like, Marcus... Sleeping oh. naked by the fire. Nothing gay about it. Nothing gay. On a fur rug, yeah. <laughs> I just see Marcus, Cole, Dom, just and like Barry. driving in a, just driving to the car, like all singing, work all night, sleep all day. They pull yeah, over. Turn that fucking slaughter up. <laughs> they, pull, they, pull, they pull over, start kicking the shit out of some locusts. They just like curb stomp them. <laughs> Get back in. Dude's night. Yeah. And then, and then when you. When you figured out it was uh, what's her name Anya, it was like I was like, oh well, Anya's been there the whole time. That's fine. That if it's her, it, and it was totally fine. It it really wasn't a you know a big deal. But the thing about that though is the main character still is um, Dom and Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Not really. And for me, it wouldn't be so much that. It'd be more of like suddenly just switching a character just for the sake of having this new character. It's like for instance. We grew to like him, but at first, when you're playing like Metal Gear Solid Two, right? Like, whoa, 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 whoa! What the fuck? What the fuck? What? <laughs> What? Then after a while, you kind of grow like, he's not so bad. He uh, he's no snake, but he's actually a decent character. Well, yeah. I think, well, I think what threw you off it right too is like nobody fucking told you this was gonna happen. It was just like all of a sudden, like this game is fucking badass, right? And like you're like, dude, it is like taking Metal Gear Solid and just amping the fuck out of it. You know that tanker mission was so badass. And then you're like, you're thrown down, you're like, whoa, whoa. And, and, and you know, it's one of those Raiden's still. I, I like Raiden. He's, I like him too. Plus, has you got a sword in the game, so yeah, he's. Cool. I'm not gonna lie, to this he's not Snake. We we all know that game would be even better though if Snake was just the main character the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> we we all know that there there is no denying that. Guest starring Raiden. Yeah, yeah, Raiden should really be the guy who hangs around you. Which is the, which is the case in number four. I never played four, but I've seen some of the stuff. And that Metal Gear Solid kind of did that. That Metal Gear Solid two because they advertise 
you're Sold Snake and you're on this you're you're on this uh, tanker and you're like oh, okay that's cool but then you realize yeah they really just they advertised the that. tanker part that was it which he he does Kojima does that because when Metal Gear Solid Four came out they just advertise that you're in this uh, they advertise you're in the Middle East fighting when that's just the very beginning of the game uh-huh. I understand it so but back to Tomb Raider yeah. though um. No, it's just the, the. I mean, that game is just overall cool. It just starts off, and it's just the way it kind of builds. At first, you're like kind of surviving. You know, you're fighting off some. They have a handful of animals. I do wish there was more animals though, because I remember like playing Tomb Raider one, when there was that fucking bear in the very first level. That like was like so scary for the time. Did they just come out of nowhere, or because well, you just kind of going around like do 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 do, and then and then like you know, I think you get towards the end of the level. It's been quite some time. I keep saying like I'm gonna go home and buy that game again just to play it again. Does it take a lot to bring down the bear? It's been a long time since I played. I remember like he's like if you didn't use the shotgun like you just used the pistols because the pistols were like unlimited. It was like it took quite a bit, and I don't know. It's been so long since I played it, but I just remember that part was like, oh my god, there's a fucking bear there, and it was like the first time you see a bear in 3D coming at you, and it was just you know, and there's no other this one. There's wolves, but other than that, the only other animals there is to kill is like seagulls and bunny rabbits and deer. Seagulls just for food. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you really only it's like in that first part you got it like kill and then the game kind of just tells you like no just keep killing animals and like re- you know reaping the rewards you get experience points <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of starts off like yeah you're trying to survive you just kind of have to cook this meal and survive and then you got to find your like friends and crew and whatnot and the next thing you know you notice there's like all these kind of guys bunkered out there and you go between like ruins of like ancient japan and then you see like ruins of like world war ii bunkers and stuff so you get these kind of like makeshift like you know shotguns and machine guns and stuff and you kind of just keep like the cool thing about it is like when you get like experience and you collect salvage from like either killing people or picking up boxes or animals for some reason okay. I don't know how salvage from animals helps you build better weapons but whatever I guess it's kind of cool so your gun, your gun starts off as like a world war 2 gun like well depending on which one it is and then they just kind of evolve and they get you know you just start adding parts to it and everything it's kind of cool Oh, check out, I got the scope out of this rabbit. Yeah, exactly. Like, from all these rabbits I killed, I can now build myself a, <laughs> a silencer, a scope, and a grenade launcher. It's just something as crude as just, like, jamming a cat, like a like a, like a, like a rabbit at the barrel end. Of a, yeah. That was in, what was it? That was in, like, Hostel, not Hostel, uh, Postal 2 or something. Oh, yeah, well, I was seeing also, like, the South Park video game where you put the cow launcher in there. It was like, oh, yeah. And then, like, it would land on you like it's ass. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot the South Park shooter. Yeah. I, try, I played at Cisco's house a little bit ago on, like, multiplayer. I, I'm so bad at that game. He's so fucking good at that game. I just... Well, one thing about those games that throw me off is it's got, like, Turok controls. Yeah. And I always call it Turok controls because it's, like, reverse, like, the way that you're normally used to playing games. Yeah, exactly. And that always throws me off. Always does. Plus, I have the smallest little, kind of, like, battle rings. The, the ring, the, the, like, battle areas were so small. But they, in the game's so big, like, itself, just, like, the regular mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. But this Tomb Raider game, though, I mean, like, I'd recommend it very highly. I think it was really cool. You know, it, was, it, never, it never told me what the, like, the ending time was on it, but I, I have feel it was a little over 10 hours. You know, average the length of the game. I'll have to check that out at some point. But, well, you can get it for, like, under 20 bucks now. It's, like, $15 or something. I'll probably used. get that then, yeah. You know? I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's just, and to me, it's like, man, it just, it took, like, great elements, for, as I said, from Arkham City from Assassin's Creed, from Prince of Persia, you know, and other games in between, and, and just really just made a, an awesome mm-hmm. game. I don't know, I, as I said, the only thing is, I, I, I wish there was a little bit more animals, just like these wolf things to kill. But the game's, you know, it's captured everything you want. It has the adventure, it has the action, it has the horror, you know, and then, you know. Are there any of those moments that just make you jump, kind of like? Oh, there's in... a lot of those moments in the game. Mm-hmm. Just like how the old, old Tomb Raiders used to do that all the time, too. Mm-hmm. Those old Tomb Raiders are scary as fuck. I think what made old the one that was like she's like I don't want to die I don't want to restart this whole level again <laughs> please God don't make me do that games really do hold your hand now though on that you well this one's because I was once like because for the longest time I, I never died and then like I just didn't, the main reason I I die in that game is because I I think like I can fucking jump that and then about halfway through nope couldn't make that <laughs> you'd be like ah! but no it's just it's cool like I I, I kind of like the, like adventure games are probably my favorite type of video games. If I had to really think about it, like, those, those are the games I like the most. They always are pretty fun, yeah. You know, I like games where it's like, you know, sometimes like the killing's not the, like, the main part of the game. This one kind of is like, you know, there's a lot of good you know action and killing, but mm-hmm. so I always like the like exploring and the climbing and like, you know, just like, how can I make it to this kind of area and yeah. puzzle solving and so much. You know, the puzzles in the game aren't that difficult. Mm-hmm. But not like, you know, Prince of Persia always thought it had good puzzles in it. You know, difficult yet not like frustrating. Yeah, I... I... 
I never even finished Sands of Time. And the reason was because that was one of those... I've mentioned this several times on the podcast. My house got robbed one time. And my house got robbed when I was like halfway done with that game. Sands of Time, the first time I remember, like that, I, there was this problem I had. It was, I used to call it the Ubisoft problem. Because I would be on multiple Ubisoft games. The elevator door would open? The, no, when you'd get to an elevator area, like... I remember because like, I got to the elevator in Prince of Persia and it's I saved right fucking there. I was like, I'm going to stop here. And when I came back to play the game later, the elevator would not go up. Not so you're go just up. stuck in this limbo so I, land. So I, for a while, I was like, fuck this game. I'm not playing this anymore. And then like, about a month later, I came back and played it and just like, it was like, oh, I got to this. Now I got to that area like in two hours. Mm-hmm. But before, I was like, no way. I put this time into it. Fuck that. Yeah. And then America's America, so I was playing Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. There was a part where the elevator wouldn't fucking open. I had to restart the mission. I think I did it like twice. And there's two points. Like, if I have to do this a third time, fuck this game. <laughs> oh, I want to tell you this before I forget. Uh, for, did you hear? There's some controversy about this. I mean, you read a lot of Game Informer, so you might know. But did you hear who's going to be playing Metal Gear? Uh, who's going to be playing uh, Solid Snake and Metal Gear Solid Five? It's not David Hater. Not David Hater. Huh? Not Someone even. else though. You wouldn't guess, but is it going to be Spike? No, no, no. It's it's somebody. Let me put it. It's someone sort of big, but it makes sense. But at the same time, like I like my Hater. On the bright side. It's well, you're what? playing as Big Boss, so it's not technically. Oh, so it's not, but still, David Hater is Big Boss though. Too. He is, yeah, but he, he Big Boss gets older, so. Who is it, Josh Brolin? That'd be cool. No, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, that's good. Kiefer Sutherland, I guess, kind of is like, he's. I, I like Kiefer Sutherland enough, and he does kind of have, I guess, a snake-ish voice. Yeah. I still like my David Hater though. I, I, why he, would David Hater not want to do it though? I don't know if it was him or if they just. I don't know if they said, "Hater, get your shit and go," and you know, just had the whole like. Packing the boxes from the from like the <laughs> just like he had like you, a, you get out of here you 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 go you run don't come back they like tear down the day of the team just like, like he's like crying and like pointing like you just go you get out of here you take you <laughs> just keep running and don't look back don't look back I don't know if he I don't know if he could speak English so it'd be just his translator just saying that. <laughs> Is he Dale's just crying and pointing at the door <laughs> pointing at the door and yelling in <laughs> Japanese. It's well, like this David Hayter statue. They just like remove the head, just put Kiefer Sutherland statue on it instead. Well, they just moved like the um, Kojima Studios to like Los Angeles. I think it's. And the second I saw that online, I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Do they have any jobs available?" <laughs> I would fucking drive down there to get a job at Kojima Studios. <laughs> I think it's one of those things. It's probably strictly a marketing thing. Like people like celebrities. <gasps> What if we got a celebrity to be Solid Snake? I think it's probably generally one of those things. It's probably not even Kojima. It's probably, like, Konami. It might... Well... Maybe. Because Kojima's so big that I feel like he has, like... It's not like somebody's gonna tell him not what... Or, like, tell him no. So, I, I, it must have been... I, I I really have to guess that David Hayer just probably said, You know, I've done it enough. Let somebody else do it. That's the only thing I say. Yeah, I hope it's that. I but hope it's again, not him. I hope it's not him just pointing and screaming, You go! You go, you go you take this back! You just get out of here! The translator's <laughs> saying it while like... Yeah. Uh, well, we saw an interesting movie today. Don John. Legend of Kyle. The Legend called. of Kyle. Really, it, that movie really reminded me. We have a friend named Kyle, and I was like... Dude, this movie's like him. Now, he's not Italian. He's not from, like, Rhode Island. He's Italian, actually. Or actually, well, he's partial, partial Italian. Yeah. You know, but well, I, I guess what, what I mean by Italian, he's not like, you, you know, your stereotypical, like... I guess not stereotypical, but... He's not your New Jersey Italian. Yeah, he's not that kind of Italian. He's not Tony Danza, put yeah. it that way. <laughs> Which, Tony Danza was definitely the best Tony part Tony Danza is the best part of the movie, and it's just like... I he... love Tony Danza. Like, it's like, I, I keep... I was waiting for him to return in a movie. You could almost have that movie. You could almost make the, the spinoff... Pa John and just yeah, be pa like, John. <laughs> just like uh, just like just focus on the Tony Danza character because whenever uh, he was he, on screen, he only had I'm, like three scenes, but he was fucking hilarious. He was hilarious. He was I like angry. Movie. It was really all he, he was just sitting the whole time, dude. That's like watching that. television. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was just funny. Well, generally we should clarify. Kyle, he's never been on the podcast. I've mentioned him a few times though, but I remember we did the audio commentary to the live action drunk Batman movie we did. Mm-hmm. If you if you guys ever seen that, he's the guy that played Bruce Wayne before in he became flashback. Al- in the flashback before he became an alcoholic. That's he's Kyle. also in a handful of other of our live action movies. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this just really reminded me of like Kyle because it was like it was literally like everything Kyle likes to do. It was like Kyle likes women. Kyle likes working out. You know, Kyle likes taking care of his car. Kyle likes porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was just like, it just told us, like, this is it. That was, like, the main scene. At the same time, because I cut you off, go ahead. I said, like, when I was seeing the trailer, I was like, I gotta see this just because of that. It's like, that's just what it looks like. Which, the whole thing is, when this movie first opens up, because generally, uh, 
I mean, he, he doesn't seem like Kyle at first. It goes on, like, oh, this is kind of like Kyle. There's certain things about it. Like, well, yeah, there, there's elements that, like, if, you know, there's the kind of, like, the eastern side. If this was on the Pacific, maybe it'd yeah. be different. Well, as I'm watching the movie, at first I'm kind of like, if I knew this, Kyle's the exception to the rule, but I was watching this movie, and I was kind of like, if I knew this fucker, I probably wouldn't get along with him. I probably wouldn't like him. And the fact that I liked the movie and cared about this guy uh-huh. says what a good... I, I thought it was a decent script. I thought it was a I good liked, movie. I liked it quite a bit. And it's cool because Joe Scorn Levin you know, wrote, directed, and starred. And I don't think he's ever done that before. No, he never has. And so, I, it, this definitely probably came from a personal place for him. I, I think so. Yeah. It's definitely one of those movies, though. I don't think it's a woman's movie, though, whatsoever, though. I think it's... A, it's it, it is really... You know what it is? It's a male romance movie. It is. It yeah. is really targeted at men, and it's like kind of has like it's a romantic comedy for men. Yeah, that makes any fucking sense. It is. It is. Yeah, and as we were like, I thought it was just it was just so fucking funny because like the thing about the movie is he's kind of this guy who he has like this mixed up idea. He's like addicted to porn more or less, mm. and he has like this idea of what love really is or what sex what fucking is, and he gets it from porn, which is porn's really un- depending on what kind of porn you're watching, mm. very unrealistic, and that's what he goes for. He's like, look, I can get all the pussy I want. I just, you know, porn's just, it's what I want, and I just don't seem to get that, so. You know, one of the best things, one of the best, it's like some of the smallest things, but these are like the greatest things in movies. I, I love how just like, you, you always, always look for porn because you hear the sound of like the iMac turning on. It's like, he'd walk out of the room and it's like, dung! <laughs> it's just like, it's like, I get fucking off on that sound. <laughs> and I just thought that was like, that, that, that is great. <laughs> that was also funny when he had like, um, because Scarlett Johansson in the movie, she plays kind of like a little. She, at first, you kind of understand. I mean, like because this movie, like I said, um, it's kind. It's definitely not my kind of crowd. But regardless, I. Well, still, yeah, because it's kind of like it's the bro. It's, co- it's kind of the bro, kind of like douchebag New Jersey. It kind of has like that stereotypical like of like the new New Jersey type people. Mm-hmm. That being said, though, it's still a pretty good movie. Mm-hmm. And Scarlett Johansson, at first, you kind of see like. I kind of see why he likes her, but as time goes on, you you realize. Oh, I, I was so glad to learn because I I really don't like Scarlett Johansson. It, that was the only turnoff when I originally saw this trailer. I was like, oh, Scarlett Johansson, because she's just like in everything nowadays. It seems like. I think she's decent, and I just don't think she's the grandest. I don't think she's horrible. I just I'm just not a big fan. I guess that's just more it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes down to like actors and actresses, I feel that everybody always has those handful of actors and actresses they just don't like. And they almost don't have the grandest, like, defense reasons for it. It's more just like, there's something about them I don't like. And Scarlett Johansson's one of those people, like, I don't like her. I think what really ruined it, and I think what put it over the edge, so I was never a big fan of her before, but, like, really what made it horrible was Avengers. Because they're acting so bad in that movie, and the way she's just written. And I don't know if that's necessarily she's her just kinda like, just She's just kind of, like, bored throughout the whole movie, it seems like. And I guess to me, as she looks, she's always, in her movie, she always just kind of looks like a douchey woman, if that makes any sense. Like, she has the look of, like, douchette? What, yeah, like a douchette. And so when I, when I was so glad to learn that she was just the biggest douchey character in that movie, I was like, oh, thank Christ. I was, cause I, at first, because when you see the trailer, like, I'm like, I hopefully hope that's not his true love, is the, is, you know, Scarlett Johans. Because, I don't know, she just did that. And then when you learn, she's like, oh, no, she just, she just wants to control Joseph gordon love it. You know, she doesn't want him cleaning his own fucking house. <laughs> that, that to me was like, that's where what? you, you yeah. Went, yeah, you should punch her in the fucking face. Because she was like, no, I'm not going to see you. I'm not gonna be seen with you buying a fucking Swiffer pad. And the, the, the whole, got the whole <laughs> and thing. He's like, dude, this Swiffer pad, it's great. <laughs> Wait, you don't own a Swiffer? <laughs> and then it got off the whole thing of like, because his whole thing is everybody has, in a sense, I mean, the, the uh, two characters focus on for a good majority of the movie. Everybody has their own kind of coping mechanism or what they want in life. You see, Joseph Gordon Love it. He just wants, uh, he wants porn. That's his thing. Mm-hmm. But then you see Scarlett Johansson. She loves all like these very generic, shitty romantic comedy movies. Yeah. And there's even a part when they're. They're even making fun of it. I thought this was kind of funny. They got Anne Hathaway and Channing Tatum. Oh, that part was hilarious. To like be in like this fake romantic comedy, and they were watching, they were seeing in their own little world. And I just thought that was, uh, I thought that was like a funny little nod. You know, Joseph Gordon Levitt had to go in there. He's like, yeah, because he's, you know, he. Yeah, I got a, got a favorite ass. You guys want to be have sort of cameos in this movie? I'm doing. <laughs> and it's it's funny because it's like those people that like the kind of the shitty like movies in a sense the shitty yeah. ro- now romantic comedies there can be great ones of them but there's a lot of them that are just kind of crap <laughs> yeah your typical Jennifer Aniston one which yeah, she can be really which good Jennifer but... Aniston, she, I, to, I always thought I always thought Jennifer Aniston she's a really good actress I always just feel like she likes to just take the easy route in life that's kind of like you talked about actors that you kind of got a thing against for me it's not so much that she's a bad actress. I just don't like a lot of the at- the movies she's in. But hey, I guess you you do what you gotta do to get paid. And what I watched about Jennifer Aniston though too is. She's in some movies, even though she does some movies that I, that I think are just kind of like, this is kind of retarded, 
And then I've seen some movies where they're like, this is good, you know, it's not bad. But then she's in some of my favorite movies of all time. Office though, Space. Too. Office Space. She's also in Rockstar. I mean, now she's not what makes it. Marky Mark is what makes it in Rockstar. I mean, it, and then in uh, Office Space, it's the other guys. But still, she's in those movies, and they're some of my favorite movies. Yeah. And she does a good job in those movies, still. And, and there's, yeah, there's other movies she does a good job, too. And other ones I've enjoyed, but there's also ones I've seen that are stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Southern Accent, really famous. Uh, Lady Thorne? What? Lady Bob Thorne? No, no, no. Uh, pretty Boy. Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Him, for instance. He's a good actor. He's just in a lot of movies I don't like. He's just in a lot of like romantic comedies I don't give a fuck about. But when you see that dude get out of his bounds and do something different, mm -hmm. he's really good. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because, you know, you think about the movies he is in that he's really good in. Like, oh, this is great, but... Days Confused is one he's really good in. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah it's like Even fun. though that's kind of like... <laughs> he's like a sexiest man alive countdown for yeah, women. It, and it, it was just like... It, it was that guy. And those first things I was like... He was number one on like a top. It was like a top fifty countdown. It, was one of it had to be CMT or some bullshit. It, it was on one. It was either it was on one of those stations, one of those music stations, and uh, I was just like, really? So in life, the 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 guy that women thinks the hottest is the guy that's like, that's what I like about those high school girls. I get older, they stay the same age. It's apparently, what they want. So that's apparently what women want. <laughs> But no, but this flick, though, I thought it was actually... There's actually some pretty dramatic stuff, and I like how it goes the direction you wouldn't expect it to go, because you know Julianne Moore is going to be kind of a big part of the movie. Because <laughs> she's Julianne Moore. Because she's Julianne Moore, yeah. But at the same time, though, it's like, I, I thought maybe well, maybe he might go with her, and then ends up, he ends up get, being with her, but it's not in a very stereotypical kind of way, because you find out as the movie goes on, because it does have some dramatic stuff to it, and you find out that her... Uh, there's a scene or two where she's just crying by herself... <laughs> <laughs> and all those scenes just fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, it's funny because he's just she's just crying and like he just looks at her like he's like, gonna say uh, something. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, howdy, but... Yeah, don't worry about it. Later, bye. And they just have this kind of weird relation in class. He's just kind of like awkward around her. But then he, after he breaks up, he talks to her. They end up fucking, and then she ends up uh, confessing that like her husband and kid died like a year plus ago, and she still hasn't gotten over it. So. And he's just more or less rebound, but it's in a way, it kind of works out for both of them in the way they want it. So it's not like the stereotypical, we're soulmates, but it ends with kind of like, we are what we need for each other right now. Well, they, yeah, the nice thing about it is because it's kind of like, Scarlett Johansson was like what, he, in a sense of what, he thought since he they were good. clubbing and all that stuff, him and his buddies is like, that defined like, you know, somebody who just looked good in a sense, even though I don't think, because they kept pointing out other people in the club and stuff. I was like, that chick's hot. I'm like, they're way hotter than Scarlett Johansson. The brunette he went home yeah, with? Yeah, that brunette. And then also like the one that like the little short Italian guy kept pointing out, that guy pointed out better chicks than like, yeah. he did. But whatever, it's like, so that kind of, and Joseph Gordon love its eyes, that was like the hottest chick, but her personality was horrible. She just wanted control. She didn't want him to do any of his own things, you know. Mm -hmm. Where Julianne Moore was kind of like almost like an older hippie lady that kind of like said like you know what that's cool if you if you like porn well fuck it that's nothing wrong with that here have some porn <laughs> here this is artsy porn and to top it off I'm not saying this to be mean but I'm uh, but top it off she has decades of experience yeah she has been boogie nights she knows what she's doing <laughs> she was once a porn star yeah exactly. <laughs> She probably has a better idea of what she's doing than Scarlett Johansson would. You know, but she and she, she, she allows great. him to be himself, and that's almost what he needs. And she looks still looks great, you know. Yeah, because you know she always looks good, and even though she's like you know probably ten years older, probably plus than Joseph Gordon Love, it's like you know mm -hmm. the whole point is that they both get somebody mm -hmm. who they can be themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's like the whole concept of the movie. Mm -hmm. And plus, it also comes around because he, he builds up this fake idea of what love is just through porn. After a while. It doesn't come around like, porn's bad, stop looking at porn. No, it isn't like, I don't really need it anymore because I got this girl right yeah, here. Yeah, I, I figured out like why I was using that porn. Yeah. Because so. I was with a bunch of like material, brainless people that have... And even when you get, even when they're making out, I'm not, I wasn't really sure if Scarlett Johansson still lived at her parents or if she, if that was just her parent, that was just her room when she was younger because you saw she had a bunch of teddy bears in there. Well, I think that was just a Titanic poster. I think the whole point of that was that like there's, because like... You saw his place or her place. Yeah, well, and I don't think that was where she actually lived. I think that was like, well, come meet my parents. Mm -hmm. I gotta go meet your parents, which Tony Danza was fucking amazing. <laughs> Tony Danza was like the best part of that yeah, movie. Yeah, that, he was, hey, man, he likes, yeah, it was fucking hilarious. Brie Larson, she plays the sister to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this, she, she had the easiest paycheck of her life in that movie. Because the whole movie, she sits there texting, and it's just kind of funny, because the, the whole fan will be arguing. She just looks, she, she's just texting. Just like, whatever. But then at the very end of the movie, she's it, they do kind of a Silent Bob thing with her. She's kind of like the, the she's the cute Silent Bob, really. Yeah. She says the whole moral of the story at the end and says like, "Well, you, 
she she says the parents like why would you why would you break up with that one girl why would you do that she was so perfect and then the girl just then like uh uh brie larson just says well fucking duh here's why and she says sums it up in two sentences they just calm down and say like, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> makes sense yeah <laughs> No, that, that, that was good. And I like that, too, because it's like, yeah, the whole time she never said a single word, always texting whether they're in church, at home, or wherever <laughs> they were elsewhere. And then she just says it. That had to be so much fun for her. Just like, I get to sit around all these all these people and have funny conversations. I just got to sit here and text. And I get two get lines. Tony Danza who's fucking yelling so much that veins are popping out of his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I know. And then, like, I get two lines at the end of the movie and the most profound lines. That That's just easiest job for her right there. So and I like that. i only seen her in a few things, but she's really good. What else is she on? She's the, she's, uh, the evil girlfriend in Scott Pilgrim. That plays the... Envy. She plays Envy in Scott Pilgrim. Oh. And then she's also, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but she plays Jonah Hill's love interest in uh, 21 Jump Street. I which saw that one. She's mainly in a lot of indie stuff, but what I've seen her in, she's really good. Huh. And that's not even really technically like indie stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I see. If it comes to theaters, it can't be indie, or yeah. like main theaters. Well, she's in, I mean, I know that, I, I looked at her IMDb stuff, and she's a lot of stuff I don't know. She was on the Nerdist podcast a little bit ago, and she gave a really good, funny, like, conversation with Noah Chandler. there. Yeah. Huh. So. But no, but the flick's pretty good movie, and it actually, even though it is, it, actually, there's something that comes in. It's kind of repetition. I'm not sure, I gotta watch the movie again. Maybe you notice it more, but, um, because he, he says the whole time, what's important to me is my body, my house, my family, my buddies, my girls, and my porn, and pretty much it has those things. All I think if you watch that movie, because it, it has all those things kind of re repeat himself in that order. I believe I'm gonna have to watch it again. Yes, yeah, so it I, might break that order, but if I, if I remember correctly, for a while in the movie, at least a good portion, it would go and kind of open up the same way. It would be him. Da, 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 then restart. Da, 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 restart. Yeah, just differently. It'll be always be him in the same living room with his family eating, or be church. Did I say church? Yeah, well, yeah, that, you know that might be true because of that. That'd be something to look for next time you go to watch the movie. Yeah, because, and then there would also be like, you know, it'll cut to him. Maybe he's not fucking, but maybe he's with a girl, and then he always follows it up with watching porn. Yeah. So it might, I'm assuming at some point it breaks that, because at some point it actually shows. And maybe that's kind of part of the movie, like the first kind of like act or two, it, like it has that, and then as the third act kind of comes in, it's like now that repetition is broken, he's more free. Yeah, and it, after a while. Cause from being restricted, I guess. It'd always show when, 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 he, when he got to, I guess, the body part. It always show the same shot. Maybe he's in different clothes, but he's walking down the hallway to the gym. And then one day he stops in the middle of the hallway, says, "You know, I'm gonna go play basketball today." And he just goes and plays yeah, basketball because he, he breaks it through routine. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those things, and it's it's funny, but it's also it's got some pretty deep emotional stuff, and actually says it says a lot right there. I, I feel like it's got a good message. It's got a mix of good comedy, good mm -hmm. drama. Surprise! A bunch of old ladies are sitting behind a scene. I, in this movie. I, I remember I was sitting there. I was like, "Do these people know what they're seeing?" I mean. It, it, Everybody else in that theater was older women over at least 60 years old. I would even say over 50. I'd say over 60. Yeah. And it was just like, this is a strange movie. Because this is really like a 30-year-old's movie. When you really break down. The core target audience of this movie, I think, is somebody late in their 20s, 30s. Late 20s, early 30s, yeah. Yeah, and I almost saying straight up. Yeah, you could say late 20s too, but I'm just saying like it's straight up. We just want to make it simple. Is a 30-year-old movie. I've kind of realized. Some of like favorite actresses or least favorite a favorite actors, least favorite actors. Joseph Gordon Lovett, he's kind of snuck up on me like a ninja. I think he's becoming one of my favorite actors. Cause I like, kind of agree too, because I, 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 it's like subconsciously, I just keep, I see him in a movie. It's like I should go see that, yeah. but I don't say it out loud like a Brad Pitt or something like that. Like it's one of those things because he's slowly getting. To, he goes, he was in Batman. He was in Looper. He was he's, in. Uh, he just has. I think he has good taste in picking the roles he's in. He he's was, in uh, the other one. ten things I hate about you. I think well, he's in that too. But I mean, obviously, he's also in um, Third Row from the Sun. Third but he's in. Um, 500 Days of Summer. 500 Days of Summer. Which, that's one of my favorite, like... That's probably one of my favorite romantic comedies right there. And it's like, that movie, I think, nails it down to a T of just that whole process. I just absolutely love that movie. And that's kind of what, I think, turned me more on to his work right there. And Plus, this movie's written and directed by him, so I yeah. get a lot of credit for that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's one of those, like, I think about most movies I've seen him in, it's like, I always like him, no matter yeah. what. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always one of the best parts of the movies. He always, good actor. even even in like Dark Knight Rises, which I know we beat that horse to death and resurrected. He's in Inception too. Yeah, Inception. Even in Dark Knight Rises, even though he's like a fake character that's not really in the comics, he still does a good job, and he's still like, and ultimately, uh, mm -hmm. he serves his purpose in that movie. He does a good job doing it. So I know, yeah. So yeah. overall, pretty darn good. Yeah. 
That looks like a good place to wrap it on up. Cool, I gotta go play more Grand Theft Auto Five. I, yeah, you just had to look in your eye like, I gotta go Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> you just see me looking over my 360 this whole time. Just like, and you just, just when you get alone, you just dim the lights a little bit, pull out like, open the case, just like, <gasps> oh. my f- just go down and just sniff and go, <sighs> oh, smell of new game. <laughs> just like, what's important you, to you me? You just my- take the disc and you just start melting it into like a <laughs> syringe and just kind of insert it in. <laughs> And just kind of lie back in your bed, twitching slightly. The gameplay. Just the <laughs> As game flashing play. lights go across you. I'm just kind of like, what's important to me? My my family, my church, my house, my Grand Theft Auto. You know? And then after a while, it just goes, Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, all those Grand things. Auto. It's just the only thing left. <laughs> yeah. Well, till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And make sure to check out oldmanorange.com. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye.